Hey kids, have you ever wanted to genetically edit the creatures around you for your own personal gain? I know I have. Maybe one day little Fifi left her great life of unlimited food, water, and shelter to escape into the great unknown, only to be hit by an Amazon driver carrying nothing but air fryers. With enough money and risky favors, you could just bring Fifi back. But how exactly could you turn a hunk of delectable road treats into a living thing? Ah, uh, see that's where cloning comes in. But we aren't talking about no slap it into a futuristic bank tube and get a whole new animal back type of cloning. We are talking about a very precise technique known as somatic cell nuclear transfer. But before that, I have to talk about the cloning techniques our forefathers used. Not your old grandpappy and mima though. Your old ancestors known as single cell organisms. That's right, these little chunks of phlegm and whatever else were the inventors of this innovative technique. This is the first kind of cloning, in which one cell uses the good old technique of binary fission to essentially split itself into a perfect copy of itself. Scientists saw this and were like, whoa, and were filled with determination and will to discover how they could one day harness this great power. The first person to actually do it was a man named Hans Adolf, not that one, Drew Edward Driesch who discovered that by shaking two sea urchin embryos, much like you would shake any child, you can split them into two completely similar sea urchins after birth. Having proof of concept, one scientist decided to take it a little bit further and go to mammals. Mammals, however, are a little bit more difficult, as they tend to be a little tougher around the genome. Simply shaking it won't do the trick, unless the trick is brain damage. The scientists took embryonic cells from other sheep's sheep parts. These cells are very useful as they can morph into any cell that the body might need, much like MGK shifting genres every album he drops. However, these cells remain dormant through adulthood, so in order to activate them, the embryonic cells they took were from a sheep's udder, allowing the nucleus to bond with a cell that was capable of making an exact copy of itself for future generations to milk. This process did, however, take them 277 tries, meaning that there are 276 failed sheep carcasses lying somewhere around the hillsides of Scotland. Not that they were absolutely sure cloning was a real possibility, scientists began to develop a new more modern strategy, known as genetic editing. The most famous example of is CRISPR, which despite the name, is not a knockoff chip brand you would find at the 99 cent store, and is actually a tool that precisely slices strands of DNA, allowing them to heal and only include the genetics you choose to include. This has a much higher success rate than those from the past, and overall a much more clean way to create life than other methods. That's all for today, so remember kids, if you want a brand new Fifi, you may as well have 276 rotting corpses instead.